Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a natural response. No. I'm not as skilled as you. You dabbed. Get out of here. Shame on you. We do not dab here, Oz. Greetings, I'm Shad, and my squires have been knighted, yet I might have been a bit premature because these, these knights, they need to learn how to sword fight just a little bit better. And uh, I figured if I'm going to be teaching with them, some of you guys might also find it a little bit instructive and helpful to learn some of the things I'll be sharing. Now, I'm not an instructor, yet. <laughs> I've been playing with the idea, okay, because there's no Hema Club in my area. So I'm, I'm, I've been tempted to just start my own, right? But I don't have the time. And so in a year's time when I got a bit more money, I've actually been thinking about um, reaching out. And so if anyone's watching this, if you're a uh, well, you know, practiced Hema person uh, in the Victoria, Australia area, I'm interested maybe a year or two, whoever, who knows, to actually bankroll the starting of a club. I would still own it, but I would need an instructor and people, and so that would be, I would hire you to be instructor. <laughs> so I was like, if I can't get a club, I'll start my own and hire my own personal trainer. I can train other people as well, things like that. And it's an opportunity for someone to even start a, a club. It wouldn't be their club though, it would be mine. Um, and uh, they, they would have to also follow the same approach that I take when it comes to swordsmanship, which is, slightly controversial and uh, I might be sharing some of it in this video as I share my swordsmanship philosophy with these guys and we're going to do some practice sparring and things like that. I'm a very hands-on person. I think one of the best ways to learn some of the important aspects of swordsmanship which is like distance and timing. That's like some of the most fundamental stuff you can really only learn through practicing, through sparring, okay? And so I feel getting hands-on right in the beginning is good. Um, and it's just then practice, 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 practice. And so I'll share some drills here and there perhaps as well, but I'll be correcting form. And when I see errors, I'll be saying you should do this or do that. And that means it might not necessarily be in order because I know there are some fundamentals that you should generally approach first. But if I see something that these guys just, you know, can be told to improve on, I'll say you can work on that because there's some fundamentals in footwork, in structure, in uh, position and stance and stuff that we're going to be going through and we're going to have a bit of fun and so they'll be sparring with me, I'll be seeing how they go, what they need to work on, what they prove and I'll be giving pointers and then they'll be sparring with each other and I'll be commenting as well and uh, we're going to film it all. Isn't that great? These guys, look how excited they are. This is becoming a long time off. Oh, oh no. so before we begin, First of all, do you see the the amazing like all these strapping garrisons they're wearing? It's like it's like they're inspired by someone. I just don't know who. It's like that's that's, that's a beautiful garrisons you got there, guys. I want my skirt back <laughs> and my red What's riding a, red hoodie. You'll maybe we'll let you put it on a bit later. Um, so one of the things that I actually like to do with swordsmanship training and stuff like that. Well, the question is like, what do you train with? Now, steel is great. I absolutely think people should train with steel swords. Blunt, for safety, of course. Unless you're doing cutting, and then of course you need a sharp one to practice cutting and stuff. But when you're actually sparring with people, yeah, steel is great because it gets you the correct weight in your hands. And so I do drills with real swords. But in, when it comes to sparring, absolutely I love sparring with steel swords as well, but you need heaps of protective equipment and it makes the bar for entry really, really high. And so your other option is uh, a synthetic training sword. This is a rolling synthetic. The problem with these, right, is that you need nearly as much protective equipment uh, compared to when you're using a steel sword because you can still break bones with these. Like these are, they're solid, solid, solid. And so the best kind of lowest, you know, if you want to lower that bar to entry, one of the best options actually are foam swords. Now, this has already been agreed on by many people in the Hemi community. A great example like I, Axel Patterson, like a phenomenal swordsman in the Hemi community. And, you know, there are sparring videos of him with the foam pool noodles with a stick sword and stuff mm. like that, okay? So I think if that's good enough for Axel Pat Pattinson? 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 Sorry, Axel mate. Axel Addison? Yes. I love you, I love you, mate. Um, Absolutely, you can train with foam ones, and if you're going to use a foam noodle, like a pool noodle, uh, LARP ones are brilliant. I've already kind of advocated that I think LARP swords do have a place in HEMA training because you don't need excessive protective equipment. These guys are wearing fully padded gambesons, so that's a good one. You can be hit pretty hard with foam ones, uh, and there is a point where it does start to hurt, but it's very hard to injure yourself with just a foam sword and a good padded jacket. And so uh, that's what we'll be doing, we're just doing basic 
light ones and these guys can move up to you know synthetic or steel ones as they like and if we get more protective equipment if you get your own i can only pay for so much guys Gee. but i do have some of my protective equipment and so one of us could wear that and everything um but yeah so look there are of course limitations with lap ones i like this the weakness of the cross guard is one of my one of my own pet peeves but anyway so we'll get started hey eh? okay so oz is only how often have you trained with a sword oz um well when i was younger it was every night before bed A real sword. Oh, never. But you've had one session before this. Yes. Yeah. All right. So foot forward, your leading foot. Um, offset your other one at an angle to get your balance and your stance right and things. Here's a first kind of somewhat controversial thing about stances. This is my own philosophy. You're free to agree, disagree with me. The way that I learned and what I'll be teaching these guys is to read your opponent and put the sword in the most optimal position to take advantage of what your opponent is doing. And so it's going to be more adaptive, more fluid in that sense. And so, for instance, uh, Oz, right? Um, if I had a stance like this, what's a stance that you feel would take advantage of my openings, but also guard your own position? This. It's not bad. It's a very standard, like a very safe one. But another stance that I tend to like is this one right here, okay? Because it's going to protect my upper body. But if he does a reverse cut, I can protect my lower one. And so I've got it a lot of options. And so sometimes I do that and it puts my blade close to strike his hand or something like that, thrust. That's kind of the first thing that I like to try and emphasize is to read your opponent and, and just figure out where you can hold the sword, where you can put it to take advantage of their openings and things. And so by this stance, what's a good one that you think would do? This one. This one, why is that? Same one I did the first time. Yeah. So what if I did that one? Then I keep it. You, you're just gonna keep that stance? Yeah, because it's in front of me. I want to keep the sword as yeah. close to you, and between you and you know, like I could go. Back. Yeah, yeah. So what if I did this? You know what? Here's a good sword position. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not letting you engage the blade, and so what would you do to stop it? <laughs> There's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing I can do. It's yeah, no, too good. No, so now you do that to me. Okay. There, there's a lot you can do. So wherever my sword is, my sword is blocking my front. But then if you are able to move to an angle, well now you've got a direct line. You still need to adjust to where my sword is, but readjusting your center line to get into an angle where their sword isn't, and now you can strike, okay? And there's heaps here. So again, if you go into long point, all right? Another way is to strike the sword out of position and then counter okay and so people who are very practiced in HEMA will be putting names to these moves for my whole life in swordsmanship I'm a visual learner I love watching and then seeing I like that I'm gonna practice that but I've never bothered committing the names to memory of course when I've seen a lot of HEMA practitioners just practicing and talking about it they're saying the name everyone's like I don't care about the name it's like I like the move <laughs> and so this is why some of my views on swordsmanship are a bit controversial because I'm not necessarily a traditionalist where I want to learn all the names and traditions, which I think is great, and I think if you want to do that, that's fine. But I'm more about, I want to know the techniques, okay? And I want to learn it on a in a very reactive, flowing, instinctual way. If you go back to the, the holding, you know, a long point stands out like that, extend your arms to get more structure, much better, much better, okay? Um, now, why was that better than that? Why do you think? more rigidity more rigidity more structure exactly so if you hold it in right it's going to be much easier for me to hit the sword out of the way now hold it out keep your arms there see ow that hurt my wrists though well you don't have to hold them too tight in my wrists shut i need them for writing <laughs> <laughs> but you recovered back on in position a lot and so there's a part of swordsmanship that's really fun, which is uh, not letting them engage. So if you step back, so if you try and hit my sword, right? So you want to oh, okay. do a sideways hit, okay? <laughs> is not let, like... That'd be infuriating. <laughs> yeah, I love swordsmanship. It's so much fun because it is this delicate dance and almost tactical play of chess. And uh, so one of the great defenses, right, is if people are trying to get rid of your sword out of the way so they can attack, is you don't let them engage your sword and you move it away and you can take advantage of their own because it's over swinging. Every time he over swings, he's wide open. <laughs> but one of the things that you'll also need to do 
is uh, not over swinging. This is actually a more fundamental thing. So whenever you go for a strike, don't over swing, okay? Strike and keep the sword right there, ready to block and defend. And so if you're gonna see me when I go for an attack, I'm gonna go like this and my guard is still up, okay? And so try some basic attacks. Um, so like a simple downward strike, okay? But I want you to stop there. Don't over swing, okay? All right, so you're a bit off balance and your structure is a bit poor. Why did you switch hands then? Well, I'm just, I can do it either side, I think. So you're ambidextrous, eh? What's your main hand though? What's your, that hand? So hold that one up. Yeah, so that should be your top. If, if this is your main hand, that should be the top one, okay? Better, better. You're kind of leaning forward, but sometimes it's worth it if you're trying to get, you know, really get more reach. Um, but that one is a bit too much. So when you want, you want structure. You want to, yeah, exactly. When you stop, your arms are smacked right okay. there. Oh, because just like this, much easier to block, but if my arms are like this, he can easily push it down and break it. And so when you want to go in for a strike, lock your arms when it, in the rest position. When you, when you strike, you're gonna end right there, hold the structure in, and you can support the counter attacks. Because if your opponent has poor structure, and you've got good structure, when the swords engage, you can often pull and like, so if you have poor structure, right? And we do like a thing, you can hit and break through their guard and just blow through their defense and get hit. I don't think I'm an expert, okay? But I, but I don't know what people gauge the level of expertise. There are people like these guys, they think, they look at me like an expert, but that's because of the large difference in, I guess, practice that I've had in it. But there are people who have practiced way more than me that look at me as like, he's a dude. You know? Don't worry, Shad. I don't look at you, at you as an expert. <laughs> Thank you. I'm kidding. You are. Yeah. All right. But me. what you're going to see is a very unfair match, basically. But it's instructive to show you how how much of a disparity it is when you have someone who is practicing swordsmanship versus not. Okay. Now, yes, I have sparred people who have well practiced in swordsmanship. I've got videos on this channel, but this obviously is going to be a different thing. Oz is trying and he's going to give a good effort and I'm, it's for instruction and stuff. And so basically try and hit me is basically right. the... Are you going to hit back? Yeah, of course. Ah. So try and defend as well. <laughs> ah. Oh. <laughs> hit me in the ear. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> so do we want to try and break down what you did? I won't break down what you did. You hit me in the ear. That's the point. <laughs> ah! All right. What do we do, Shad? All right. So you were overcommitting. You overswung. If I remember, I like we'll see it in replay better. But I withdrew, let him overswing, and took advantage of his opening as his sword passed. Okay. And so you need to be very careful in your attacks to um, be, pay attention to your own defense. Mm because you don't want to attack and leave yourself open. And if you do, you only want to do it when you can account for the opening and that your opponent won't take advantage to it. And I actually think there's going to be a lot of attacks I'm going to land that I will leave myself open to, but because I know they're not going to take advantage of it, that's the unfair thing. But now I'll show you some committed attacks that I'm going to make against Oz. And this is going to be unfair because there's a couple of things that new swordsmen, when they're just trying out, nearly all of them do. First of all, which they're very common, is that they're very twitchy. They react to the slightest movement because they're very defensive. Sorry, I thought you were going to hit that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you know that they're going to do it, you can really take advantage of it in an unfair way because you can manipulate their blade out of position and then take advantage of the opening all the time. And we might see some of that right now. Chad beats his employees. Send I... help. <laughs> so, all right. So, one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to cause Oz to um, uh, unless he pays attention, but I'm going to see if I can get him to engage my sword so he opens his position and then I will take advantage of it. So... <laughs> Even though I was waiting for it, you did it! See? That's what I mean. It's so instinctive to just react, isn't it? Because when, you, when you're not comfortable yet, you, you, you're very worried about getting hit and you see something moving, he's like, I've got to do something! And because I'm aware he's going to do it, I, I know and I can just move, I can just cause him to react, his sword moves out of position, and then I hit him. And so this is something any swordsman will do if they notice their opponent is reacting too much and they're twitchy. 
but an experienced swordsman will very, very rarely do that. And you saw that in the way that Oz was hitting to me. I am reacting, but I react in a very precise way to take advantage of what he's doing, usually his overswing. So it's good to react, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but if you react in just a more reflex twitchy thing, and especially if you're reacting to what, the, what I'm doing to manipulate them, I can control the fight and do it again. So, so react, but don't overreact. React in the right way. So for, it's hard, it's hard, right? But like, if I'm gonna go to try and say do a thrust, okay, hold that pose, hold that pose. So Oz did that. Look how open he is on that side. Okay. Yeah, my ear is particularly exposed. And, and your ear is particularly exposed, okay? So a much better defense, and this is again, you learn through practice and also instruction as well. A much better defense would have been to push up like that and hold the sword ready. So if I, I went to it with a thrust uh, and keep it down low, okay? So now his sword is technically still on point. And if I withdraw, well, look where his sword is. If I withdraw to hit him, all he needs to do is bang. And so that defense, what he could have done, is just raise, thrust. So, because I went in like this, and I went fully around, and I'm open here now. And so if he just blocked like that, and then thrust, and so that's the difference between doing that for a defense, doing that for a defense. Because this action puts your sword in position to counter-attack, follow up straight away. It's not the only counter that you can do, but that's the philosophy you need to follow. When you defend, you need to defend in such a way that puts your sword in position to then react and counter. Okay, so do you want to try that again? And remember, you want to block like that. So I'm going to go, and so... Oh, too high again. Too high, you want this, exactly. This is all about important position and structure because by being too high, it's harder for him to thrust at me. But by raising it higher and angling it down, if I went there, you can just walk. And when I tried to withdraw, he still would have got me, okay? So, do you see how awesome and specific this is? Um, so Oz, thank you for your time. Um, might do some more later on, but uh, we'll switch you out for one of the other guys. Yeah, yeah? okay, see ya. All right, Nathan. So Nathan, we, we've tried it once with Nathan before, and he's particularly jitterish. So the thing that Nathan needs to practice particularly is not hunching his shoulders and kind of blocking like this. He might do it naturally, and so out of anything that I want to practice, we're going to get a stance right, but I'm going to try and get him to stop doing that because as soon as you do this and you react too much and you try and block, you're not paying attention to what your sword is doing and not putting it in the right position to counter and block. So take your stance, okay? So if I come in to strike, just don't raise your shoulders like this So now we're going to try and do exactly what I was doing. When I come okay. in for a feint, mm -hmm. I want you to block like that, right. okay. okay? But stretch your arms. So that was horrible structure what you yeah. there. Keep them straight, okay? Right. Angle the sword down, all right? And then, because when I, you'll be able to, so from the starting position, you'll be able to push it aside, you're raising, and look at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's a beautiful move, okay? Um, and so if I go, and I'm gonna go, so you're a bit too slow there, but you did get my hands. So again. Yeah, you need to down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what you want to do with that is literally just step into it and you'll get me straight away before I can even react. Okay. And so, look, oh, it's great. It's great. See, it works. <laughs> it works. That's just one way you can do it. There are heaps of different counters. And so I'm going to stop him practicing that. I want him to remember it but I don't want him to think to always revert to that one. Because if he does, right? And what if I, so you're gonna to react to that way now. Yep. And what if I do this? Okay. Because now I knew what he was gonna do. So he was going high, I fainted. And instead of bringing it around that way, which that move would have blocked, I went in and I went down to do a reverse edge cut underneath him. Because he, was, he went high, he's open. And so if he just resorts to one, practice kind of defense is going to leave him open in other areas if I don't do the exact thing he's expecting. And so, again, I find it more beneficial to practice in a more fluid, adaptive way where you keep practicing different defenses and things. Mm. And you remember that one, resort to that one, and uh, it becomes a very reflexive thing that you just refine through continued practice, sparring and stuff, what's working, and then you get different defenses, different things, different, you know, 
um, on your reflex to be out of counter. So now we're going to just do, you're going to try and attack me, okay? It's unfortunate that I need to make the caveat that I'm about to make here because I do have my critics, especially in the human community. Not all of them, of course, but there is a group of people who are still very salty about an old video I made where I dared point out a potential criticism in HEMA. And that was just one criticism. There is so much about HEMA that I love, even though the point I was making that video, though framed imperfectly, was actually correct. I had a back and forth with Dave Rawlings on it, and we ended up agreeing. And so, unfortunately, something that these critics love to do is to point out any flaw in my swordsmanship, like I've ever claimed that I was perfect in the first place, with the intent to frame me as some misinformed, unskilled fool who doesn't know what he's talking about, and therefore nothing I say should ever be taken seriously. Or that I could be a credible source of information on literally any topic that might ever come up on my channel. Now, ignoring the fallacy that you don't actually need to be good at swordsmanship at all to be able to still say correct things about swordsmanship, if you yourself just learn about it from credible sources. What I'm doing here in this video is trying to build Nathan, Oz, and Ben's confidence. I'm not going 100%. In actual fact, I want them to hit me here. So of course, I'm leaving myself open. I'm trying to encourage them to try and land hits on me. And as obvious as this is, I do have my haters. And like, seriously, some people who are unbalanced with their dislike of me, it's quite impressive. You'd think there'd be far more important things in life to worry about. And these are the exact type of people who would say something to the effect of, look, Shad's being hit by noobs here. This is how bad he is at sword fighting. What an idiot. How could anyone take him seriously? Lol, 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 lol. It just goes to show you the level of disingenuous criticism that can exist in the world. And I know that even making this disclaimer won't really affect the people who hate me to such an unbalanced level, but I still like to cover my bases. Let's see how we go. So... Oh, that's already thrown me off. <laughs> so, alright, we'll try it again. But you you are touching, right? You're just not committing to it. I want you to actually... Okay, strut. walk into it. Just actually hit, okay? Hey, good, good, good. And so that I actually saw that as a feint. Did you do it on purpose? Were you think that one? No, that was not. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> he went to raise his arm, so I actually expected a high strike, but he went and then he went in for a thrust. So I went high and then he went underneath me. So great, great. You're doing the same thing. I'm I'm raising to a yeah. very standard defense right here. So what's a way to predict it? So if you're noticing me always adopting this defense, okay, lead in with the same move that triggers under. it, and then go under. Okay. You see? Why'd you stop mid-swing though? That technically could have been a double. See, the other thing is, is like, you've got the gaming mentality, it's like, oh, I'm hit, it's over. Yeah, exactly. It's like, stop it. <laughs> because if you hit, but you can still land a hit on me, if you're going to die, you might as well take the other guy with you. True, true. Okay? And so, look, doubles aren't good, but they're better than just dying, <laughs> in my opinion. And so, of course, if you can land a hit on your opponent still, do it. But optimally, you want to be able to strike in such a way that your opponent can't hit you back. And so... Do you want me to attack you now? Try to get you. Go for it, Shad. All right. So I'm gonna. So you're reacting too much. So I was striking in, to getting off the center line. All right. So again, you could have thrust forward and hit me in the face. Yep. Okay. okay. And so there's a lot you can do in count. Okay. Okay. So, you still, you probably, if you just extended, yep. you're right. <laughs> okay, okay. Ah, double. Uh -huh. So, you're getting your confidence now? You're, yeah. you're, are you moving it around better? Good, good, good. Yep, 
So you'll need to account for my blade a lot as well. Mm. You're diving into what would I, what result in way too many doubles because in every hit that you're landing, my sword is usually already touching you at the same time. Yep. And so you're leaving yourself up in a bit too much. It's hard for me to show because you, you let me take advantage of too many openings. Um, and this is when it isn't necessarily good for an experienced swordsman to spar with inexperienced ones because you start to adapt to the, the freebies that you get where an experienced swordsman will just punish you for it. Um, but uh, anyway, so put you up your guard. Sorry. So you're, you're very static, you're like, yep. okay, you need to react. Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> So you're doing a lot of this, okay? One thing that you will need to practice is what, how to strike from this position, because if you just do that, it's not gonna do much, yeah. okay? When you're in like, cause I, I like to be in this position, it's my favorite, but a lot of it is the first movement is a feint, get them to react, and then I pull back for a more dedicated strike. So I'll try and show you one. Then this is a basic one, I just go, okay? <laughs> So that's about structure. Yeah. I shouldn't be able to hit your sword aside so easily like that. And if you see me doing that, what you do, move it around. Don't let me hit. Perfect, perfect. And what you do, what do you do directly following up that? I do another thing. You move it out of the way and then thrust. Hit me yeah. straight away without a pause, ready? Perfect, perfect. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. So that's the beginning stuff. Thank you, Nathan. So, so Ben is actually, the most experienced out of my knights. Um, you've, you've swung a sword around a bit, haven't you, Sir Ben? A bit, yeah. A little bit. How much? Um, well, there's been a couple of sessions with you, mm -hmm. and then um, I actually grabbed one of his swords and I've taken it home and I've been... Oh, um, he's been practicing. Yes, I've been practicing. Okay, so why don't we just go straight into some freeform sparring then, and I'll see what, where you're at. Okay. I want to see where Ben is at. He said he's been practicing at home, which is great. And so again, we're going to do some freeform sparring and uh, just some casual fun, all right? So. Ah, good, good. Good, that was a good one. So I like that. You'll probably see me doing too much flipping around. And you fence, extend. Good, good. All right, so I'm gonna lay off the aggression. Just try to attack me now and see how you go. Good, good. Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. So, thing that I've been noticing is you're leaving your head open a lot. A lot. Right. Um, your strikes are usually here, around there, which means I've been getting a lot of your upper arms and a lot of the head. Now, in doubles, not every double is equal, okay? So, in that last exchange, you actually, where did you land your head? I think it was on the side, okay? I'd be willing to take a hit on the side if I got a straight one down someone's face. And so, if you can exchange a lighter hit to what is a game ender or a, or a death blow, I think that's all right. It's not perfect, you would want it always. But in a lot of those exchanges, you really are leaving your head open. Okay. Now this is a mistake I do as well, and it's about raising your guard. In these strikes, yeah, you want to, you always want your hands higher with the blade angled down. Like that, exactly, okay? That's a really good guard position. It's a good counter and uh, 
it's a good at blocking as well and stuff. And so, because if you block anything in these positions, you can counter with a direct thrust in, okay? So, maybe try and focus a bit on that. I'm not sure if there's any specifics we can try. Of course there are, but if something comes up, we'll just, we'll just see. So I need to practice other positions. But the thing is, I find that so natural. It's the one I practice most. Um, and uh, works for me. Sometimes I resort to roof. Sometimes, you know, full. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see how you go. <laughs> head again, man. Head again. So in that thrust, okay. So in the forward thrust, still, I think you landed there, right? Yeah. And that might have been, in the, like, if he actually got a good solid thrust in, and I got a good head in the head, we're both dead. And so... So what I found, though, is I I missed your sword. I wanted to hit your sword down so I could uh, thrust in. Uh -huh. And, then and I withdrew it, yeah. I hit yeah. it, and then <laughs> straight down. Um, so, when you go for a thrust, okay, much better thrust than this, is this. So when you go for a thrust, and like I do this in drills, when I practice thrusting, I'm going this, okay? You have a cross guard to protect you, and it holds a defensive line up still. And so, thrusting like that, look, you can do it, but if you do that, you can be hold a defense on. And even if you thrust low, raise your arms at the end, and uh, unless they're not attacking, but if you hit like that, this is your defense, okay? If you like this, it can counter hit you, easy. So thrusting, always raise your arm. Raise your arms. Yeah, and this is, good, this is good to practice nearly in anything you do. This is again what I feel is one of the fundamentals, okay? Unless you are specifically striking low, but in most situations, raise your hands and angle the sword down in your defense. Your legs can defend themselves. You can just move them back, okay? The upper body defense is really important. And so, even when the sword is pointing up ways, raise your arms, keep your hands up, okay? Good, 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 good. Good. Ah, okay, good. And so, yeah, that wasn't bad. I'm gonna bait you, and I'm gonna leave myself open to see how Ben counterattacks, like I was doing last time, okay? So if I'm, I'm here, I'm going. Oh, I missed totally. So, yeah, yeah, just leaning right into it and thrusting, it's a great move. Good, good. Letting it catch on the cross guard. Good. Good. So, he went in to engage. I didn't let him, and I took advantage of the open. Good. <laughs> You're up. It nicked me. So, those are some good reactions, I reckon. Um, you're looking for the opening. Once our swords touch or we engage, he's looking for the next opening. So he this already, no offense to the other guys, this shows that Ben is actually at, a next, at another advanced level because instead of the, just thinking about the first engagement, he's constantly trying to find the next one, find the opening, and that's good. <laughs> right, I get you in the front. You you did it. I slapped the material. <laughs> Gotta protect your arms, man. <laughs> did I hit your hand then? I, I think you got me there. Okay. On that one. I was like, I'm sure that was connected. <laughs> Gotta protect your arm. <laughs> I think that was the flat, by the way. Good, good. Reacting. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to hit your shoulder as well. No, no, it's fine, it's good. <laughs> it's a double. That one connect? Yeah, that one got me here. Yeah. 
<laughs> Good stuff, Ben. Good stuff. You both disappoint me giving up on the glorious Gambesons. I'm not a fan of the Gambeson anymore. I feel bad for being not so for casual, but Oz's mobility would be it's unfair. Not more mobile. I am more mobile. The Gambeson definitely it's makes like, me uh, feel more like a uh, T posed uh, oh, come on, game character. Alright. <laughs> Alright, ready, Oz? <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. all right, so Brett, that was a feint and strike. You raise it, got you to engage his blade, and mm. then hit low. Ooh. Ah, yeah. Ooh. So that was hard to tell. That hit my do? leg, but, leg? yeah. Ah! Oh. How? So that was on the flat. You guys need mm. to uh, try and resort to more committed strikes. When yeah, okay. You, and so when you feint, Try and land a proper hit. Uh, this is proper. Look, look. look this is thing, proper. Right? Try whatever you like and see what works. I know what works from my own This is proper. We should recreate in episode three. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> you have done that yourself. I was not looking. All right, you want to go? Good on. Let's go. Oh. These were actually a good match to each other. Honestly, <laughs> two retards. Guys, if you guys practice a lot against each other, you're going to progress at a very even rate because you're both fainting in the same way, you're both reacting in a very similar way. Nathan, you're doing way better with your flinching. Or like, you're becoming more comfortable, mm. uh, you're committing, and you're not getting too jittery when you see an attack come and you're actually responding. And it's all just a matter of practice, you're getting used to it. It's good. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't mean to go so hard. No, that was really good. That was great. Because I walked straight into that. You really did. That was a perfect response. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's a natural response. No, I'm not as skilled as you. You dabbed. Get out of here. Shame on you. We do not dab here, Oz. You know what? This is what I have to say to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel I really need to apologise that you were subjected to not only a dab, but a sword dab. I mean, we'll be interrogating Oz to make sure he's not watching any Jake Paul or Logan Paul. This is some serious stuff, because if he has, we'll be hitting him with more than swords, I'll let you know that. It's a natural reaction to just, you know, block. No. No, you're not. You're never living that down. So where you guys are at now, I reckon the next step for you, you guys, will actually be drills. Because what you don't want to do is keep doing what you're doing and ingrain some of the movements you're doing on your reflex. Because a lot of your strikes, okay, um, are just not ending right, not in the right guard position. The way that you overcome those are with drills. And so when you hear, like some of the drills I do, like you practice a sideways strike and you step sideways like that step sideways like that. And this gets you used to realigning your center line. It's just a one basic drill, that's great. Another one is like striking up, back to center, striking up. And this gets you used to raising your arms in the strikes and stuff. And then you can do just like, you know, you're, if you're in this position, you'll need to pull back. And so you could do a feint or anything like that, where you go feint and then bring in the solid strike, but then you end right there, ready to readjust some things. And so there's a lot of different drills that you could go through, that you can practice on your own. One that really helped me practice utilizing the back edge is going in with a strike here, but then switching to a back reverse cut, okay? Because that gets you used to utilizing back cut. So when you're there, you can go down and just gets you used to it. So when you're sparring, you can then resort to it much easier. And so you're there, reverse cut, but then the same way, you're there and you reverse cut. And you switch, you start on the right and you go left, then you start on the left and you go right. Okay. And then another great drill is literally just stepping where you go strike, 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 stepping into each one. And that gets you used to a lot, like it ingrains a lot of structure. So I think my hands are probably even too low in those ones. So a better one is keeping there, strike, strike, strike. And it ingrains 
the right movement onto your reflex just through those drills. So there we go, one of the earliest training sessions with the game nights. Uh, tell me what you think, because we can do more if you enjoyed this type of stuff, but a lot of practice isn't video worthy. What specifically Nathan and Oz need to move on to next are drills, really. I reckon drills are the next thing to help practice things. And so if you're in a club, you would probably just, if, depending if you're on a basketball court or something, I would be sending these guys to doing step drills back and forth across the um, basketball court. Practice, 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 back to sparring, utilize what they've been drilling in sparring, back again and stuff. And also, Ben, I think your drills are also with you. Again, doing structure. Same with me, because I'm sure many team practices will be able to point out. Shad can work on this, I know, I know. And that's stuff that I will train in as well. Uh, so drills are great. And you drill, and you go back and practice. You drill, and you practice. But anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed. I um, hope you found some of it instructive at the very least, if not um, enjoyable as well. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. So until that time, farewell. See ya.